internet welcome back to my channel today i'm so excited to be filming my new whistle and birch planner for 2022 it just came in and it means that i get to set it up if you want to see how i set up my 2021 planner then you i'll link the video somewhere down below you can check it out i filmed it over a year ago i'm going to do something pretty much identical I guess to that one where I basically go through the weeks um, it's also a good opportunity for me to just check out the planner and see if anything's changed from last year but I go through each of the weeks and I put down anything notable major events whatever I need to know so that when it does come time to memory keep and plan then I have those reminders in place and I don't have to constantly be checking Google Calendar or anything like that so I kind of like that I am going to be using it a little differently last year I was using the monthly views as a social media tracker kind of but i've started doing that more in my hobonichi weeks so i've not really been using it for this as much so i haven't really thought about how i want to use the monthly view for this just yet maybe it'll come to me but for this video i'm not going to be using the monthly views so it's just going to be the weekly views for now i order the 12 months every year i've been doing vertical planning for I don't even know how long, but I have so many old coils. I started with Erin Condren, and then I moved over to Whistle and Birch, and I've been really happy, happy, I can't speak. I've been really happy in my Whistle and Birch planners. I think it just holds a special place in my heart because she is a Melbourne-based designer, and so I feel like I'm supporting a local small business. She works a full-time job. This is like a side hustle, very similar to me, so it's so relatable. So I just, I think this is my third planner with her now yeah i'm pretty sure this is my third and so i've just been really happy so if you guys are curious i will of course link the store down below you can check it out it fits all the normal vertical planning sticker kits all right so i got to customize the front cover which i love so just put my name down and then the year and i just love this particular design it's so cute so it's very similar to the planner i had last year well this year i guess um although you can see how much thicker this planner is in comparison to this one this is so thin but i didn't even realize um you get to pick out the fonts and you get to pick out how you want it styled and i did not actually refer to this year's planner i just went with what i felt made sense and clearly my tastes have not changed they're exactly the same okay so let's flip through okay so this planner belongs to me i'm just gonna put my name in it really quickly Oh, me and my not so great calligraphy skills but you know i'm working on it um i might just open this one to the side like my old 2021 well old it's still current my 2021 i just kind of curious to see if there's been any changes to it all right so flip over and it actually looks almost identical i guess the font this font has changed a little bit and some of the styling has changed but for the most part you can see it's a bit messy you can see i use the note sections just for scribbling and i just put random stickers here um i don't know why i did that but yeah it's it's like a different style but the concept is still the same so i think that's probably what she's done this year is just changed the fonts a little bit but otherwise they're probably pretty much the same and okay i noticed that the quotes on these pages are the same for each year my goal for the year is just to fall back in love with myself and the world life again that's fair enough um and the colors are the same so i don't know if you guys use the same colors but all those colors are the same so it looks like it's pretty much the same ah okay one thing that i did last year which i probably will do again is see here this tab when you pull the tab open, you see this first instead of going straight to this monthly view. And I really didn't like that about this planner. I really don't. I still don't like that about this planner, actually. What I really loved about the Erin Condren's is that if you just flipped here, you'd go straight to the monthly view. So I ended up sticky taping or gluing these pages together. So I will probably do that, but I probably won't do it on camera because you have to be really precise with getting it aligned like the um hole punches need to be exactly otherwise it just starts to flip weird i can't do that with the camera just right there so fyi i'll probably do that after i film this video um but yeah so monthly view and then we go into the first weekly view which is so exciting this last week always overlaps with the previous 
uh, planner. And so I never really know, should I plan in that one or should I plan in this one? And usually I just plan in this one. I don't know. I kind of like just starting on the first page and it's all fresh and everything like that. So um, I've been using the same uh, sticky tabs for so long that I'm very close to running out now. They're like on their last leg. So we'll see if they end up finishing in this setup video. So I'm going to be using the Zen Pop box ballpoint pen so when I'm marking um, little paper tabs in my journals or planners or anything I always prefer to use a ballpoint pen because if you're not careful gel tends to transfer the ink and then I'll start getting all these like splotches everywhere so that's the main reason all right so New Year's Eve New Year pretty simple I think I might put the tabs in first and then write on them. So then we come to the next week of Jan and I'm actually on leave all of this. We've got mandatory shutdown at work just because with um, COVID and everything, no one's been taking leave. So everyone has so much leave built out. I have like a year's worth of leave, which in all my life of working has never happened because I'm not the sort of person to save leave. I just spend it, which is not like me. I tend to hoard everything else in my life, but my annual leave, I just spend it because the time away from work is more valuable to me. So I don't know if I should mark down that I'll be on leave, but I don't want to use that many stickers on it. So maybe what I'll do is I'll just, actually I should probably do that for this previous week as well. Just a whole week off. And then I'll do one for a whole week off on the previous and the next week as well. I'm very excited for having the entire two weeks off work. Okay, so besides that, there's nothing on this week. And then back to work. Okay. I just pulled out this little um, tray I have sitting in my drawers. It's like full of little knickknacks of things that can't store anywhere. And I realized I still have all these old post-it notes that I think I'd like to use up as well that don't belong anywhere. These ones are not as cute, so I'll use the little bears. Maybe I'll use these for birthdays. Yeah, maybe I'll use these ones for birthdays. And then maybe I'll use this boring one. I don't quite like the color, but... I can use it for things that, I don't know, noteworthy, but not really. Not really noteworthy, but I feel like I'll just add it here anyways. Okay. And then the next week is some birthdays. So we've got one of my friends, her daughter's birthday is on the Wednesday. And then my actual friend, like who's the mother of um, this girl, is on Saturday. So I remember when her daughter was born, it was, uh, I think it was like, I remember the story she told me where when she gave birth, her wife completely forgot about her birthday because they were so focused on the birth of their daughter. So I just thought that was so funny, but understandable. And I might just fold it so it's a little easier to write. Okay, cool. So then the next week is actually my mom's birthday. So I'm going to put her down as well, obviously. I love that these bear tabs actually almost fit the full box. If you're curious to know where I got them from, they're from Daiso. Very handy. Although I've not been to a Daiso in over one and a half years because they're closed. <laughs> and then we come to this week. And so the 1st of February of 2022, I think, is the Lunar New Year. I think. Are we welcoming in the dragon this year? I think it might be the dragon. So Lunar New Year. I'm not quite sure which animal it is. I know we're in the ox right now. So I think it's like rat ox dragon there's like a whole story behind it that my parents used to tell me and i've forgotten most of it <laughs> i have to look it up three is sitsubun which is kind of like a a time for renewal as well i suppose because in the northern hemisphere 
this time is kind of going towards spring, whereas in um, Australia, we're still in summer, but we're going into autumn soon. So it's kind of opposite, but I still like to acknowledge the events either way. And then we go into February. Sorry. Lovely. And what is up happening here? My friend's birthday is here. That's right. I was like, there's something on the 13th. So put that. I feel like a lot of birthdays that I'm aware of are kind of clustered with each other. And then there's a period where there's no birthdays. And then December comes and boom, birthdays again. Oh, actually November. Okay, so it's JT's birthday. Don't think there's anything noteworthy. The downside is that because of COVID, I can't plan any travel. Actually, I really like how these are much more subtle. I just noticed it because in this year's planner, let me open up October. This is you can see how the fonts are much stronger and I tend to white these out because I don't use them and I like to stick other things on top of there like my weather stickers so I like that it's much more subtle now because sometimes I don't want to white them out I don't want to be like just I don't know I don't want my planner just be full of whiteout tape so the fact that it's subtle is easier to ignore for me um I don't even know what I was saying before Oh well, we'll just keep going. It's obviously not important. If it comes up again, it will. Um, and then on the 4th of March is James's birthday, or Jimmy. I usually put James. I use the name interchangeably, to be honest. And I have to catch myself if somebody isn't familiar with who he is by both names. Then they're like, who are you talking about? I'm like, oh no, no, that's Jimmy. Um, Jimmy's been really lucky, by the way. Throughout these last couple years of COVID, he's always managed to celebrate his birthday with us because every time his birthday comes around, it's like, it's not lockdown. But then when Violet's birthday comes around, lockdown. <laughs> I feel really bad for her when that happens. Um, all right, so February's over. Let's move over into March. And so this week, I don't think there's anything. Why do I feel like there must be a Labor Day? Like, March always has a Labor Day in Victoria. I'm just going to Google it quickly. 14th, sorry, it's on the 14th, so it's the next week. I don't have it marked down anywhere, so Labor Day holiday. It's kind of like the next public holiday after Australia Day. I missed Australia Day. Oh, I'm like all over the place. All right, let me just put in Labor Day first. So I usually put public, so I know it's a public holiday, and then Labor Day, and then in January. So I'm going off my Google Calendar, which I thought I had set up prior, but I don't know why those dates are not here. It's strange. Um, I have to actually go back and retrospect it, retrofit them in. So the 26th of January is Australia Day. Which is kind of odd now that I look at this because it's basically a public holiday in the middle of the week. So I'm not sure if I think people might just take these first two days off and maybe these two days. I'm not sure. But I, I haven't actually planned out how I'm going to take my annual leave next year. So I don't know. <laughs> I'll have to like come back to this at some point. All right. Hopefully I have the other days marked out but um okay i think i do i'm not sure why i missed those two all right so then we've got labor day and then i don't think there's anything else majorly noteworthy in march uh, we have got april coming up here i know that one of my friends jt's son oscar it's his birthday i feel a little bit bad because i don't know if i have so JT and Faye, like, they're two of my best friends. Um, obviously, Faye's my best friend. Um, but they have two kids each. And I remember the day that their first child was born. Because obviously, for them, it was a huge thing. But I keep forgetting when the second one was born. Because it's, for some reason, it just didn't feel as noteworthy. Which sounds so bad. 
but that's why I'm like, I'm not sure if I have them in my calendar. I hope I have them in my calendar. I'm, I think I do. All right. <laughs> but these ones, I just kind of remember the timing a little bit better um, naturally. All right, so now we have come into April. We are zipping through 2022 and uh, nothing in this first week of April, but in this week of April is public holidays. So of course I'm going to remember. <laughs> They're like the most important parts of the year to remember. Um, it's the Easter break, which is always like the best time to go traveling because you have just so much public holidays, so you don't have to take as much annual leave. Um, but who knows what, oops, I bent that. Who knows what 2022 is going to be like because I thought 2021 was going to be the year we put all of this behind us and life was back to normal and it clearly is not even close to that yet. There we go. Sorry if I went out of focus there for a second. Um, but yeah, that didn't happen. I feel like 2021 is a little bit of a, <laughs> it's like a kind of similar to what happened in 2022, except we, we know a bit more. So Friday is Good Friday, the Easter break. And then we flip over to the Monday. This is also a public holiday. It is Easter Monday. So I'll put that there. So I don't know if we're in a position where we can travel or not, but it's just nice to not have to work. And then on Thursday this week is one of my family members' birthday, my brother. So I'll just put him down. And then I'm pretty sure Anzac Day is coming up, 25th. And this time in 2022, Anzac Day lands on a public holiday, like not public holiday, on a weekday. Because of the nature of Anzac Day, um, so I don't know if other countries do it, but if a public holiday lands on a weekend in Australia, we feel we're still entitled to the day off. So we'll just kind of shift the day off part of it into like the Monday or the Friday or whatever makes sense. But Anzac Day is considered a bit more of a sacred day in Australia because of the veterans. And so it's kind of people are like, why would you want to take a day off work when you should be commemorating them on this specific day? So the last two years, it's been on weekends. And so we don't get the extra day off work. Whereas now it's on a Monday, we do get the extra day off work. I'm sorry if I sound like a very ungrateful Australian. Um, I guess it's because it feels very remote from me personally. Like it's a bit further away. I think it's probably because it happened so long ago. It might also be because like my ancestry is not from Australia. So there's a little bit less to relate on in that regard. I have no idea. But anyways, I'll take the day off. So this day is Skylar's birthday, which is Faye's second daughter. Oops, spelled birthday wrong. That's okay. I know what I'm talking about when I get to this point, so all good. And then um, I think May, the only big thing I can remember about May is that it's Violet's birthday towards the end of May. So hopefully we can celebrate it because we've not celebrated it for like two years in a row. And she's got a bunch of stuff she wants to celebrate that's not related to her birthday. And so we have like six or seven celebratory parties and dinners that we want to do that we haven't been able to. Put this teddy bear down. I think it's the 28th. So she's birthday's on a Saturday. Cool. And then June. I was just going to say, I know June is Topius's birthday and I'm like, where is it? I don't see it marked on my calendar. It's hidden by the, um, cause my computer's right in front of me and I have the tripod sitting in front of me. So it's hiding it. So yes, I'm not the most terrible wife. I do have it marked down. It was just hidden by the tripod, but the 13th of June is a public holiday. It's the queen's birthday. I'm pretty sure it's not the actual queen's birthday. And I don't actually know why we still have this as my, as the queen's birthday. But I just like you live your life by public holidays. I think especially when you work, I guess a corporate ish job, your whole life planning is based around public holidays. And when you take your annual leave, at least that's what I noticed after I got out of university, all I could think about is when am I next going to go on holiday and when's the next public holiday? Um, 
All right, so Toby's birthday is on Monday this year. It's been on the weekends the last few years, but now it's Monday. I think mine's actually on a Monday as well. Now that I think about it, I'm like, are we actually tracking on the same days? That's kind of strip. Cool, I guess. I'm actually planning to take a day off work on my birthday. No, actually, we're not tracking the same day. I'm so silly. This year, 2021, my birthday's on a Monday, but obviously for 2022, it will be on a Tuesday. But um, yeah, I've actually taken annual leave for my birthday for no reason except that I just have a lot of annual leave and I'd like to just be at home. Tanabata is on the Star Festival on the 7th of July. And I love that um, because I play Animal Crossing, I get reminders of all these Japanese holidays. And I just would love to be in Japan to celebrate some of this stuff. I think it would just be amazing. I got to celebrate Christmas and New Year's in Japan a couple years ago and it was amazing. It was so good. Though I really, it sounds weird, I really wish Violet and Jimmy were with us because like Violet's my bestest friend in the entire world. So I feel like I share, I think I pretty much shared everything with her. And um, sometimes when I travel and I know that she would really enjoy it, I just wish that she was there with me. So one day I'd love to take her to Germany so that she can see Tobias's um, hometown because he lived in a very countryside forest, like the quintessential fairy tale forest. That's where he grew up. And every time I go there, it's so beautiful. And then I'm like, oh, I wish Violet and Jimmy were here. Um, sorry, I'm rambling. So this is Rowan's birthday, which is JT's second son. So I did get all the second born in. I love to mark my friends. So you'll notice that I don't mark all my friends' birthdays here. I only mark those who I honestly consider my family. So, and because they're like my family, I consider them like my brothers and sisters, then their children are like part of my family. So that's why I mark them down. But I obviously have more friends that I'm just not as close with, so I just don't mark down their birthdays in my planner, but they are marked down in like my Google calendars and other places, so I don't forget. <laughs> okay, so I think July is done. If we go to August, I don't have the my anniversary marked down in August, but I, I do know it's my anniversary. <laughs> I'm gonna just shift the camera a little bit because I just noticed this light here. Hopefully that's okay. Um, I'm gonna start losing my voice soon, I'm talking so much. So, <clears throat> this week is a major week. Um, it's my anniversary, my wedding and dating anniversary. Um, let me just mark it here, so I'm gonna just put that on Thursday. And then on Friday is the Bon slash Ghost Festival. So, I know Bon is the Japanese name for it. Um, I actually forgot the Chinese name for it, but this was a festival that my grandma, when she was um, a Buddhist, would celebrate every single year when she would talk to her mother, which is my great-grandmother. Um, my grandma doesn't do it anymore because she's been converted to Christianity. Um, that sounded really bad. It's a whole thing in my family, in my um, relatives back home, but, um, I still like to acknowledge it. I'm not a Buddhist, I'm not any particular religion, but I think I just like the sentiment behind it. And so it makes me think about all my relatives that have passed on, my ancestors. Um, I recently got some photos, well not recently, probably like a year or so ago, of my like grandfathers, great-grandfathers, great-great-grandfathers, grandmothers, and they were all like, they were still in China back then. And it's so weird to see those photos of them because um, they 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 look like they're from movies because they're in this sort of imperial sort of clothing. I'm pretty sure it was just a photo shoot because my lineage <laughs> in China is not wealthy. In fact, we're ext they were very, very poor. It's like a whole, maybe I should sit down and talk about it one day. I find it so fascinating how it all came together, but extremely, extremely poor family. And now, obviously, I feel like we're doing much better now. But, yeah, it just, it's really nice to think about. It. Anyway, sorry, I'm going really nostalgic as I go through the year. We'll be together 19 years and married for six years. Oh, I cannot believe next year, well, not next year, 2023, we will have been together for 20 years. That is absolutely crazy. I just, it blows my mind 
but it makes me so grateful. And I really hope we can do something special at that point. Like, just even if it just means... Uh, it, I'd love to go to Japan, obviously, because Japan was our first trip, our first international trip together. And so it holds a very special place in our hearts. But, I mean, at the end of the day, I'd rather just be healthy together. So I couldn't be more grateful for what I have now. So we come into September and we have on the 10th the Mid-Autumn Festival which we just celebrated Mid-Autumn Festival here as well. I still have many mooncakes to get through. But these are festivals like I would love to go back to China and see what it's like, how it's celebrated there. I'd love to see how Japan do it. Um, obviously I only really know more about how China celebrates it because when I was a child um, my parents would celebrate it with us so we'd build our lanterns and walk around it's so so cute <laughs> when I think about it I'm like oh um, and then if we keep going I think the 30th of September is supposed to be our pre grand final public holiday which we I celebrated two days ago celebrated I didn't celebrate it I just took the day off work let's be honest um, although the grand final did play out yesterday um, none of the teams I barrack for made it to the final so I didn't really follow it but I'm also not a huge sports person to begin with quite honestly um, but yes yeah, spoiler alert the Melbourne Demons won by a lot so it was I think it was Melbourne versus West North I actually don't know the formal name I just know it's Western Bulldogs and the Melbourne Demons um, and this might sound like nothing to anyone who's outside of Australia they're like what the hell are you talking about um AFL um Australian footy league is just it's kind of like the Super Bowl for America except the grand final in Australia it's the equivalent people go insane I've seen people paint their houses the same color as their teams so it's <laughs> people are very passionate and I can appreciate that okay so we come into October which is next month here anyways and I'm so so excited because Halloween I'm like tempted to make the whole month Halloween I'm just I don't know the older I get the more I just want to like really enjoy the festivities so I don't have anything on except Halloween so we should make a note of that I wish I had a more festive post-it note for Halloween but that's okay I really hope we can celebrate Halloween at this point. I'd love to decorate my house, like the ex exterior. That would be so much fun. But um, there's not many children around where I live, I think. I've not seen many trick-or-treaters for a few years now, so I don't know if they've just all grown up or whether our, our area is just... We don't have a lot of kids around. Um, and then the first of November, November is our Melbourne Cup so every year I usually take the Monday off so I can get the four-day weekend so I might actually take Halloween off and if my niece is up to it if she doesn't think that it's so uncool to go trick-or-treating I will totally help her make a costume I really want to make a costume from scratch for her all right so now we are in November which is great because I can feel my voice giving way <laughs> um, so I, I think Anthony's birthday is on the Monday, 21st of November, that's right. Besides Tobias, I think Anthony is probably my next oldest friend in terms of how long I've known him for. Because we met him around the same time we started dating, probably a few months after, start, after we started dating. So that's why he's... I still mention him. We don't see him as much, and I wouldn't consider him like one of my bestest friends, but I think it's because he's like one of the oldest friends I have. I feel like there's still some specialness to it. Um, all right, so these, I don't even know if I should be using the sticker. Maybe I won't use this sticker, and maybe I'll use these ones because the 25th is actually Black Friday. So the last few years, um, Australia has really been adopting the Black Friday Cyber Monday sales so much more. It's all about retail, I guess. But it's really more an American thing that has trickled into Australia because for us, our Boxing Day sales were supposed to be the biggest sale day of the year. And now I'm beginning to feel like Black Friday and Cyber Monday are. And it's so strange to me because 
the origins of these events are all from America and events in America, but it is what it is. So that's just what Australians are doing now. Okay, now we've made it to December. December is like one of the busiest, most fun, festive months ever because everybody's on well, my birthday is here, Christmas, you get to take time off work. It's the best. So, the 8th of December is my niece's birthday. Um, I think she's going to be turning 11 next year. So she's turning 10 this year. So yeah, you see what I mean? She's kind of getting close to that teenage years where I don't think do teenagers trick or treat? I don't really know how teenagers celebrate holidays. I, when I was a teenager, I just wanted to be at home by myself with my computer so I could play video games and watch anime. I wanted to play games and watch anime and I didn't want to do anything else. So that's why I'm like, oh, when she becomes a teenager, maybe I'm, I'll be like, not cool for her anymore. She won't want to hang out. But right now she still loves me and I still love, like, I'll always love her. But right now she still loves me. I think she might not love me when teenagers and hopefully when she's an adult, she'll love me again. Um, it's my birthday on the 13th of December. So lucky number 13. I know num number 13 is not lucky for a lot of people, but I think it's because my birthday is on the 13th. I consider it lucky. And then my dad's birthday is a week after. So I always like to joke that I was the best birthday present he could have received um alrighty so 25th is Christmas I really love um, that in the whistle and birch calendars they haven't noted any sort of holidays or events on the weekly spread they've kept it very neutral so it means that no matter which country you live in it's applicable to you because you can just customize it yourself I think you can order versions where they do put it in for you, but I wanted the most neutral version possible. I like putting in my own holidays because there's some holidays I like to acknowledge that are just not acknowledged in Australia very much. And when I used to get the Erin Condren planner, the thing that annoyed me is that they did put in the public holidays or any events, but they were all American. So, for example, like 9th, 7th, 4th of July, 4th of July, that's like Independence Day in America. That's like nothing in Australia. So they have a whole week taken up with that sort of stuff. I'm like, what do I do? Like, it's completely not applicable. We don't even acknowledge it in Australia. Um, all right, so that's Boxing Day is on the Monday. And then, oh, it's the end. Do you, I just realized that in 2023, the last week of December will cleanly finish on a Sunday and then in 2024 the first it will start cleanly on a Monday I don't know why I find that really satisfying but I do <laughs> and I will mark these down as well so I'll mark down the New Year's Eve and then I will mark down New Year's as I did at the start of this planner and uh, I'm pretty sure I'll have this week off work as well if history has taught me anything but um, New Year's Eve is not a public holiday in Australia. I think only New Year's Day. And because it's on a Sunday, it will probably go over onto the Monday. And I think that's it. We see the sun shifting, telling me that time is going, ticking by. But that is everything. I'm just going to have a quick last look at what these last pages are for. Perpetual. I think these are the same as last year. I might... I'm not quite sure... I might tear out some of these pages if the planner gets too thick because I've noticed that my... Oh, I've got a lot of note pages here. I do use the note pages though for scribbling, so I do like them. I like that she has pockets here, so you can have pocket here, pocket here, and then two plastic pockets. I use these all the time, literally all the time to store sticker kits that I want to use or I'm in the middle of using. And back when I would travel, these were... I can't say... They were especially useful when I traveled because I could pick out the sticker kits I wanted to use for the weeks that I would be planning when I was away and just put them down here into the pockets. I can't open these pockets right now, but you can open them from the top. They just seem to be kind of stuck at the moment. There we go. Got it. So yeah, um, let me give you a view on how thick this planner is and then how thick 
my 2021 planner is, which is not even done yet because we're just in September, so I still have another three months left. But oh, can you see? This is like a fresh planner, and this is my planner right now. Oops, I gotta take that focus off. How old? that's so. Yeah, you can kind of see. And just I have these like few pages left to go. But the co oh, I just noticed the coil is bigger for 2022. That's kind of cool. Is it bigger or is it just an optical illusion? I feel like it's an optical illusion. No, they're the same, right? This one's just a little lower. Like you can see how it's just a little lower. So maybe it looks smaller. I think they're the same. Anyways, that is my 2022 Whistle and Birch Planner set up. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and found it useful and didn't mind all my rambling. Thank you so much for watching. This is Selena reporting from my room. Back to the internet. Mm -hmm.